Hello, Indiana, PA. I hope everyone is doing well. My name is Sarah Chan, and I'm a video artist based just outside of Philadelphia. Uh, during my time as an artist in residence for Spruce, I explored GIF making as a way to expand my art practice and also to illustrate my past experience of living as an expat in China. Uh, basically, a GIF or GIFT is a file format for short looping animations um, that you see all over the internet and on social media. GIFs are ideal for viewing and sharing online because they can be compressed into fairly small file sizes without sacrificing too much quality. Some artists like myself gravitate towards GIFs because of how mesmerizing they can look and also how simply they can express a specific mood or feeling or idea in just a few frames. And for this workshop, I will show how you can make your own GIF by turning a series of photographs into short illustrated animations. For this workshop, I'll be using Adobe Photoshop to put together a GIF. Because there is a bit of a learning curve to using digital design software, and not everyone has those programs on their computer, I've also included an alternative, hands-on approach to illustrated GIF making. If you are using Photoshop on your computer, I will assume you are familiar with the basic drawing tools in the program and also know how layers work. In addition, you will need a digital camera or smartphone and a way to import your images onto your computer. If you don't have Photoshop, you will still need a computer with internet connection, a digital camera or smartphone with a way to import your images onto your computer. And also you'll need a printer, a scanner, some tracing paper, and your favorite drawing or painting mediums. First, think of something that can be turned into a GIF. Just make sure it's some sort of subject matter that is in motion, like a person dancing or gesturing, or even clouds moving in the sky. Just make sure your subject matter is moving in some way. And keep in mind the duration of the GIF loop will be around one to two seconds, or even less. Now take some pictures of that movement in rapid succession. Aim for at least six images for the entire sequence of movement. If you are capturing something moving slowly, you may have to wait a while in between each time you take a picture in order to show changes in how it moves. The more images you take, the smoother the movements will be. But this will also mean you will have to do more work to handle your images. It might be a good idea to keep your camera as still as possible. You can rest it on a surface or use a tripod. It may take several tries to get the effect you want. Check your progress by previewing your image sequence on your camera. You can also do a bit of stop motion by moving objects bit by bit after each time you take a photo. Import your images onto your computer. Place your images in a folder. Double check to see if your imported image frames are in order. Now it's time to open Photoshop. In the menu bar, go to File, then Scripts, and select Load Files into Stack. Then click Browse and locate the photos you want to use. Hold down the Shift key and select all the files and click Open. Then you can click OK and it will import your photos. 
These layers will be the frames of the GIF. For each of the frames, create a layer on top of it. Turn the opacity to around 40%. Then you can trace the frame below using the drawing tools in Photoshop onto the new layer. When you're tracing, you don't have to copy everything in the original image. Go ahead and add some patterns, change the background, use different colors, it's all up to you. The tracing can take a while, but it can be kind of meditative. As you are tracing, remember to save often. When you finish all the frames, you will need to delete the photo images you imported, but keep the frame layers that you traced. I recommend saving a copy of your Photoshop file with all the original layers so you can still go back and make changes when you need to. Now it's time to put together your GIF. Go to Window in the menu bar and choose Timeline to open the Timeline panel. Click the arrow on the button in the middle of the panel and select Create Frame Animation. Then click the button to create a new frame animation. Next, click the menu icon from the upper right corner of the timeline panel. Select Make Frames from Layers. This will convert all the layers in the Layers panel into individual frames in your animation. To preview the animation, you can click on the Play button from the bottom of the timeline panel. To make sure your animation repeats, make sure to choose Forever in the option area. When you're ready to export, go to the menu bar to File, Export, and choose Save for Web Legacy. Next, when this window opens, select this option from the preset menu. If you are using the GIF online, I recommend changing the longest side of your GIF dimensions to 500 pixels in the image size options. For the looping option, make sure to select Forever. If you want to preview your GIF on a web browser, go ahead and click the Preview button. If everything looks great, go ahead and click Save and choose where you want your GIF file to be saved to. And there you go. You have an illustrated looping GIF. Go ahead and capture your images just like in the instructions for making a GIF with Photoshop. After importing your files, select all your images and open them in an image viewing program like Preview. I am using a program on a Mac computer. If you have a PC, this process might be slightly different for you. Then go to File, Print, and make sure you are printing everything. Then go ahead and select Print. With your printed images, mark them with numbers so that they can stay in the correct order. Then with tracing paper and your favorite art medium, trace over each printed image. These will be the frames of your GIF. Again, you don't have to copy everything in the original image. You can try out different styles or techniques for each frame. After you finish all your frames, go ahead and scan them into your computer. Make sure they all end up in the same folder and that you know the location of that folder. Then double check to see if your scanned image frames are in order. 
to put your GIF together, upload your images onto a GIF making website. The one I like to use is called gifmaker.me. For the canvas size, I recommend the longest side of your GIF to be about 500 pixels. Then click and drag the slider over here to change the animation speed to your liking. To make your GIF loop, keep repeat times to zero. Then click on the Make GIF Animation button. Underneath, click on View the GIF. This is a preview of your GIF. You can go ahead and right click and save your GIF. And there you go. You have a hand illustrated GIF. Share with your friends and on social media. You can also skip the illustrated portions of the workshop and just make photo based GIFs. Both methods will take a bit of time to get through but your finished GIF will be extremely satisfying to watch. GIF making is a great way to introduce yourself to the process of animation. Thanks to the Pennsylvania Rural Arts Alliance, Spruce Arts, and the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts.